Mayor Reed, Secretary and Mrs. Uh, Austin, Dr. Judith Minor, and our distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen. As the installation commander for Maxwell Air Force Base and Gunner Annex, it is truly an honor to represent the service members and families that serve our great nation. It is my pleasure to introduce a remarkable individual who has been a steadfast advocate for veterans, military members and their families, and a tireless champion for education, Dr. Jill Biden. At Maxwell Air Force Base, we understand the unique challenges that services and our country brings. Our military members and their families endure high operations tempos, family separations, frequent relocations, and oftentimes a weight of uncertainty. With great partnerships in our local community with the state of Alabama, the River Region, and the Department of Education Activity, we have continuously worked together to provide educational opportunities and resources to our military families. Dr. Biden has shown that she deeply understands the challenges faced by military families. She has made it her mission to shine a light on the needs of service members and their loved ones. Through her leadership in joining forces, a nationwide initiative that she co-founded in 2011, Dr. Biden has focused on improving education, employment, and wellness for our military families. She serves our veterans and our caregivers. Her work directly impacted countless lives, reminding us that families behind the uniform are an essential part of our nation's defense. Beyond her advocacy for military families, Dr. Biden's commitment to education is truly inspiring. A lifelong educator with a passion for teaching, she believes that education is the foundation of a strong and empowered society. Whether she's in the classroom or working on her national initiatives, Dr. Biden's dedication to students and teachers has remained unwavered. She has consistently used her platform to ensure that everyone has access to the education that they deserve. Dr. Biden has brought her compassion, leadership, and vision to every role that she has undertaken. Her ability to balance the demands of being an educator, the first lady, and a staunch advocate for military families is nothing short of extraordinary. She reminds us all the power of service to our country, our community, and in our classrooms. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce to you the First Lady of the United States of America, Dr. Jill Biden. Hello. Hi, how are you? Thank you, good afternoon. You know, I've never taught early education, and God bless all those who work with the littlest learners. Uh, because when I saw in the classroom, my God, they have, those kids have so much energy, I don't think I would have made it all this time with all the little ones. But many years ago, I was a reading specialist in, uh, for high school students. And even though they worked hard and they wanted to learn, many of my students uh, could barely read a sentence. And they faced enormous obstacles, all because they didn't have a strong foundation to build upon. So if we want kids to succeed in school and their careers, if we want to set them on a lifelong path for learning, we need to invest in them from the very beginning. Throughout Joe's administration, he has pushed for free, high-quality preschool across America. And he and the Department of Defense have gotten it done for military students. We're here today to celebrate something big. Military kids at Maxwell Air Force Base and at 80 military schools across the country and abroad now have access to full day pre-kindergarten. Thank you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thanks. 
So thank you, Colonel Tolliver, for the warm welcome to Maxwell. Uh, it's great to be here with Mayor Reed and Mrs. Reed. And Mayor Reed, I appreciate your leadership in Montgomery. To Charlene Austin and Secretary Austin, thank you for your service to our nation. And it was wonderful to, to tour the school with you and see students learning. So providing universal pre-K is among the defining issues of our time. And what's happening at Maxwell is part of the blueprint for making high quality preschool available to every three and four year old in America. Now, one of the ways we lift up students is by supporting our educators and making sure that they have the resources they need and that their voices are heard. I know that Maxwell is only about a month into this new pre-K program. How many of you have kids here? Oh, most of you. Oh, that's great. So you, you've seen the program, you've lived it. And implementing anything new takes hard work. And that's why we have come together to get this right. So uh, as the Colonel said, I created my White House initiative, Joining Forces, to support military and veteran families, caregivers, and survivors. And over the years, I've sat down, I think, with hundreds of men and women in uniform and their loved ones to listen. And then I took all of your stories back to my husband, Joe, and he got to work. And he's had a great partner in Secretary Austin. And over the last four years, the Biden administration has lowered the cost of childcare for military families, expand, expanded parental leave, and made it easier for military spouses to keep their jobs when they move. So making life a little, easy for mil a little easier for military families is not only the right thing to do, it's a national security imperative. To the military families here today, Joe and I know that your commitment to this country never wavers, and you deserve that same devotion from your commander in chief. The president and I stand with you today and all the days ahead. The late Frances Hesselbein was a trailblazing leader, and for many years, she was the CEO of the Girl Scouts, opening up new education opportunities to young girls. What you may not know is that she advised many US military officers on what it meant to be a leader. And so she was one of Secretary Austin's mentors. And they may have looked like an odd pair. Frances was even shorter than I am, and so standing, how tall was she? She was about this big. Oh, that big, okay. So it's one of the things that I admire most about the secretary, that willingness to seek out fresh perspectives and bring new depth to everything that he does. Frances loved to say, to serve is to live. Well, Secretary Austin, over your four-decade career in the Army, and as your time as Secretary of Defense, you have lived the truth in those words many times over. Joe and I are grateful for the way that you and Charlene always take care of people. So now I'd like to give you Secretary Austin. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Biden, for those inspiring words. And it's wonderful to be here at Maxwell Elementary Middle School. Go Eagles! That felt pretty good. You know, I was born in Alabama, and it's good to be back, especially at such a great time of year because we all know that there are four seasons, <laughs> right? Winter, spring, summer, and football. That's right, that's right. Thank you, Colonel Tolliver. 
Dr. Hyde, uh, thanks for hosting us. And thanks to the, the teachers and the staff. We really appreciate all that you do. I hope that everyone is off to a fantastic start uh, to the school year. And while I'm at it, let me give a special shout out to Mrs. Quinn's kindergarten homeroom because they've checked out the most books from the library. <laughs> I, so keep it up. Keep it up. It's also great to be here with our First Lady. America knows Dr. Biden as a great educator and role model. But in the Department of Defense, we are also grateful to her as a longtime champion of our military families and our veterans. Her Joining Forces initiative has made a real difference for our service members and their families. She's a military mom and the daughter of a World War II veteran. So she has always known that our military families serve right alongside their loved ones in uniform. And no one is more dedicated to our military and our veterans than President Biden and Dr. Biden. Because our first family is also a military family. So Dr. Biden, thanks for all that you do for America's troops, veterans, and military families. Thank you very much. You know, the United States military is, has the strongest and the finest fighting force on earth because we have the best team. And that means not just our outstanding service members, but also your spouses, your children, and your loved ones. And the Department of Defense owes you our full support. As you heard Dr. Biden say, I had a brief 41-year career in the United States Army. So this is personal for me. And I know firsthand how much we ask of our troops and all your families. And I want to thank my wife, Charlene, who is here with us today. And believe me, she knows how much we ask of our military families. So when I became Secretary of Defense, I made taking care of people one of my top priorities. My team and I started by just listening. And we asked at all levels and across all services, what can we do better? What would make your lives easier? And we had an outpouring of ideas. Suggestions directly from service members and their families just like you. And over the past three and a half years, my team has listened to you. And we rolled up our sleeves and turned your ideas into real progress. For starters, we raised our troops pay by nearly 10% over the past two years. We cut prices at our commissary, saving you as much as 25% over local grocery stores. And we increased basic allowance for housing rates. And so we heard loud and clear that the families juggling work and raising kids need affordable childcare and, and quality early childhood education. So we cut costs. And we added dependent care flexible spending accounts. And we started universal pre-K programs at our outstanding DoDEA schools, like Maxwell Elementary Middle School. I'm especially proud of our DoDEA schools. Our tremendous teachers and administrators understand the unique needs of military children and their families. 
and our schools consistently rank well above average on national standards. So to our DODIA teammates, thanks for all that you do for our military children. You know, yeah, let's give them a round of applause. This department wants all of our people to succeed. So we're doing more to improve your quality of life in, in many areas, other areas as well. We're beefing up the amount that we spend on barracks. We're speeding up maintenance projects. We're offering more digital health, health tools, including telemedicine, so you can access care in ways that work for your family. And to make moves a little easier, and we know you move a lot, but to make moves a little easier, the department has extended the time frame for temporary lodging expenses and increased the dislocation allowance. We also heard over and over again how hard it can be for military spouses to keep finding good jobs especially when you're having to move from duty station to duty station. So we expanded spouse employment programs, and we're helping to make professional licenses portable and opening more paths to remote work. And so those are just some of the ways that we're making life a little easier for service members and their families. But I also want to talk about the important work that the department is doing to help keep our people healthy and safe, all of our people. We've implemented the approved recommendations of the Independent Review Commission on, on sexual assault in the military. And we took the prosecution of sexual assault and other serious crimes outside of the chain of command. Now, that is the most important reform to our military justice system since the creation of the Uniform Code of Military Justice in 1950. And make no mistake, there is no place for sexual assault, harassment, or abuse in the United States military. Meanwhile, we're tracking the urgent challenge of preventing suicide in our ranks. We're working to increase access to mental and behavioral health care and to support those with wounds that you can't see on the outside and to end the tired old stigma of asking for help. You know, we've already hired more than a thousand professionals to work full time on preventing harmful behaviors in the force. Now, I am really proud of that progress. But having said that, we will not let up. And today, I'm pleased to announce a new set of initiatives to do right by our people. First, President Biden's budget request for 2025 asks for another 4.5% pay raise for our troops, on top of the nearly 10% pay raise over the past two years. We're setting up health care flexible spending accounts to help cover the, co the cost of other things like deductibles and co-pays and prescription glasses or braces. And we're investing in even more in our child care workforce so that we can attract and retain the best professionals to care for your kids. Now, Dr. Biden and I and Charlene just saw a classic example of incredible professionalism in the people that we witnessed engaging uh, with, with, with your youngsters today. It is absolutely impressive. And for our military spouses, I'm expanding eligibility for the My Career Advancement Account Program. And that program provides financial assistance to pursue a professional license 
or an associate's degree. We're also expanding the temporary lodging ex expense even more. And we're improving the temporary lodging allowance for moves, moves from back overseas. And finally, to help our people stay connected and move toward a Wi-Fi connected joint force, we're rolling out access to free Wi-Fi in selected barracks, starting with new pilot uh, projects and, and building out. And in case you're wondering, yes, you can stream sports with it. <laughs> Those are just some of the ways that we're making life better for you and your families. But look, we can never repay fully repay our troops for the sacrifices that you and your families make every single day. But rest assured that we will never stop trying. And as long as you serve, and as long as your families hold down the home front, the Department of Defense and the United States will stand with you. And as the First Lady said, we are working every day so that you never have to choose between your love of country and your love of family. Now that's more than a goal. It's more than a promise. It is our sacred duty. May God bless all of our troops and your families. Thank you very much.